Okay. Don Joe, you know what I'm missing? Yes, I do. <laughs> All right. We get done. All right, we're going to call this meeting to order. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining us. <laughs> Very shortly, I will be sharing my screen and leading us through another fun presentation to direct the conversation. And periodically, I will bring it down and we can see each other's beautiful and friendly faces and have some more dialogue. So feel free to speak out as you would in a normal in-person meeting. But if you're not using your microphone, please turn it off or I might do it for you at the cost of a club fine. And here goes. Okay. So welcome to Fortuna Sunrise Rotary Club meeting for August 5th, 2020. This is volume six of my presidential year. We have an amazing Rotary Club and I am so thankful to be a part of it. I'm going to actually stop sharing my screen and introduce some visitors this morning. We have uh, our speaker today, Kelly Bruce from Canamami. Hello, good morning, everyone. Hi, thank you for having me here. Uh, we have Jamie A is also visiting us this morning. Good morning, everyone uh, from the Arcata Sunrise Group. Thank you, thank you for joining us. And we also have uh, visiting Rotarian Diana Rios. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for having me. Oh, there's applause this morning. Wow. Okay. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Back to some screen sharing funness. All right. There we go. <clears throat> At this time, we typically be doing the flag salute, but since we're doing a virtual meeting, a little American history lesson. Did you know on this day in the year 1957, American Bandstand, which featured teenagers dancing to top 40 chart music and hosted by Dick Clark, make, made its debut on ABC. Did you know that? <clears throat> Nothing more American than American Band. Inspirational message this morning will be by our very own Ken Halpy. Good morning, everyone. I kind of saw this and kind of thought it kind of felt fell into the, the scheme of rotary, local rotary. Do your little bit of good where you are. It's those little bits of good put together that overwhelms the world. That's by Desmond Tutu. That was great. Thank you. You don't have one with cat calls? Uh, no. <laughs> Thank you very much, Ken. Four-way test this morning. We'll be calling on Ross Raleigh. Thank you, President Simon. The four-way test of the things we say or do, is it the truth? Is it fair to all concerned? Will it build goodwill and better friendships? And will it be beneficial to all concerned, especially DISH customers? <laughs> <laughs> uh, do we have any uh, celebrations as Mary joined us this morning? Mm, through, no, does not look like Mary's with us this morning. So anybody want to fess up with maybe a celebration? Birthday? Yes. Um, my wife and I, we just celebrated our 12th wedding anniversary. Um, what was unique about this year is our daughters celebrated with us and uh, they dressed up as uh, flower girls and um, picked out our outfits and we had a big fancy production with uh, um, Heather came down the stairs with her wedding veil and um, like five course dinner there was dancing and music, and it was amazing. 
It was better than going out to a restaurant. How cute. That's amazing. So yeah, that's going to cost me at least $10. How about 12? Can we do 12? 12, yeah, yeah. 12 years? Is that how many years you've been married? Awesome. Thank you, Greg. Hey, hey, Simon, how we're going to break that down is $5 for his anniversary and $7 as a, as a club fine. Okay, okay. And would you like that to go to Foundation or Polio Plus, that extra 7 bucks there, Greg? Um, let's go to Polio. Love it. Right on. Hey. All right. Okay, upcoming events, no real changes here. Same thing, October is, is really all we have on the books, but let's get some more stuff on there. Let's get out there, people of action. <clears throat> so part of my theme for my Rotary year is introducing an artist each week and talking a little bit about their work. And this week, we're going to feature an Italian artist named Blue. And there's a picture of him on the screen actually covering over one of his pieces uh, in Italy and then another really big wall mural uh, that he's done. So we'll move on to his early life and career. So uh, Blue is actually uh, his, his moniker that he goes by and he conceals his real identity. He started out as a street artist in 1999 and um, he was uh, involved in practicing shared artistic action with uh, nocturnal raids where he did anonymous creative participation in overcade came a need for uh, signing their pieces so a lot of his early stuff was was unmarked but starting in 2004 some art galleries started to notice blues artistic value invited him to take part in both one man and collective shows his amazing work stands as truth against political events and other socialistic controversies in today's modern age. So uh, here we've got this uh, amazing piece of all these vegetables standing around a blender and a tomatoes uh, kind of climbed up the ladder about to jump in. Uh, there's another piece that's kind of like a, a evolution, if you will. There's uh, kind of the, the history of the world going up this spiraling staircase and at the very uh, top of that twirling uh, winding stairs it's it's ending and everything's kind of falling off this cl cliff and then we have this uh, uh, carousel uh, that as you kind of peel back the layers you're seeing other interesting things uh, going on industrialism and pollution and whatnot. Uh, <clears throat> Blue's uh, most famous artwork culminates in a silent graphic animated composed of hundreds of paintings on walls that apply to a seven minute animated mural. This incredible video was called Muto and um, can be found on YouTube and it's had over 12 million views to this day. Uh, the video took months to create and was painted in the street of Buenos Aires, Argentina. And um, if anybody's familiar with an artistic process, process called stop frame animation, very um, prevalent in like claymation. Blue does stop frame animation on walls, giant walls. So he will do an illustration, take a photo of it, paint over it, take another photo of it, paint over it, take another photo of it. So you can imagine how long the seven month or uh, seven minute video took to create it, it months. I mean, this guy works non-stop to create this and i'm not i'm not going to show the whole thing as much as i'd love to but i am going to show a little one minute section of it just kind of give you the scale of the project so next slide here we'll go in about three minutes Totally wild, totally wild stuff. Um, 
I totally suggest you check out more of his work. It's amazing. And it's probably hard to see all the details on this because he's working in huge scale and we've scaled these giant walls down to little pictures on the screen. But there you go. Um, so ask the Rotarian, let's see, who am I going to pick on this morning for this exercise? How about, how about past president Bob Judavine? Oh, jeez. Yeah. The, uh, can you turn on your mic there, buddy? I can turn it on, Simon. What's going on, buddy? Awesome. I, I was wondering, what, uh, give me your words on this piece. It's called Vienna. And uh, critique, discuss, interpret. Tell me the type of medium. Uh, you know, dazzle me with your art critique skills. Uh, it looks like it's uh, the medium would probably be a rattle can, wouldn't it? Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 Unlock your vision. I guess. Uh, I guess I don't know. Um, I, I think about as I get older. One of the ways that I think you know you've gotten old is when you're no longer sort of open to seeing new possibilities. So maybe that's a little bit of that. I was also reminded when you were talking about this artist uh, uh, about the painting and repainting for stop animation. It wasn't for uh, stop animation, but trying to get just the right color for my wife on our living room, I, I repainted it five times one year. So, so you, you can appreciate the hustle. I like it. I totally can. Okay. So what did it cost me, Simon? Oh man, well. I don't know. I, I think you started out strong, but then you moved into a couple of I don't knows and uh, <laughs> we're at a loss for words. Uh, admitted that your, your age was a factor and you kind of seeing the beauty of this. I think, I think we're going to go 10 bucks on that. How's that sound? So you're going to pay me 10 bucks? No, no. Well, you're gonna pay... I feel like the vision thing was valid right there. I, I feel like I nailed it. You nailed something. I mean, just, you know, Google search hashtag nailed it and then come back to me and, and we'll talk about it. Okay. All right. All right. Sure. 10 bucks, Bob Judavine, give it up. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Let's see here. Since we're on an Italian painter kick, right? Let's talk about Caravaggio. Anybody familiar? Classic painter, Italian painter. And let's see, how about Chris Broadstock? You there with us this morning? Morning, President Simon. So, so Ed, we're gonna do a little role playing. <clears throat> You're trying to impress your Italian exchange student friend by your knowledge of 16th century Italian painters, all right? So tell me, which one of these paintings, one, two, or three, is the Caravaggio, Michelangelo Caravaggio? Um, I think the one in the middle is too modern, so I'm, I'm not going to go with that one. And number one has, you know, kind of that religious, religious theme that you'd expect out of some Italian art, uh, but I'm going to go with number three. Number three. Unfortunately, you are incorrect. That's Stanzoni. That's Judith with the head of Hall of Fairness. Not Caravaggio. Uh, how about we put on somebody else? Let's see. Um, how about Leah Price? You got a 50-50 chance here. What do you think, Leah? One or two? I think, um, I think number one. One. Also incorrect. Unbelievable. Oh, uh, yeah. Also incorrect. So that would be a $5 fine to both Chris Broadstock and Leah. I tricked you good. The center one is actually Caravaggio. So Supper uh, at Emmaus is the piece. Beautiful work. All right. Thank you for playing along. Not like you had any choice. Okay. All right. Weekly recognition. Oh my Every God. Every week I am Hello, recognizing. Oh, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, we're good. All right, weekly recognition. Every week we are recognizing somebody from the club in some special way, and I'm doing a little illustration of them. 
and talking about them. So who will be featured this week in our recognition? Drum roll. That was nice, thank you. This week, Fortuna Sunrise Rotary Club member, Don Watkins. <laughs> and and I've, uh, um, I've put Don in a, a, a vintage dress modeled after a, a prominent figure in the women's suffrage movement. So look at that, huh? And I'm summing up Don with three, three themes, caring, activists, and farm to table. What does that mean? Okay, caring. <clears throat> Caring is de defined as a display, displaying kindness and concern for others. Dawn exemplifies this in her personal relationships and being an outstanding mother for her son, Jack Spider Sparks, and also being a solid partner to Sean Stoops and his two boys. Caring for the community at large and her work with, with nonprofits, pushing and pulling to create a better life for people that are in need, not to mention caring for her body by running almost every day for exercise, although she admittedly despises the act of running. Did you know that Dawn is just about to embark on a 400K challenge run over 12 weeks, at the end of which she will have uh, covered close to 250 miles, which is the same distance as traveling from the surface of the Earth to the International Space Station. <laughs> Holy moly. Don Watkins, uh, the activist, proud native of Baltimore and home, uh, Baltimore's home of the left bank jazz scene, which is a group of musicians that became internationally rec recognized over their 40 years of collaboration between a diverse group of multicultural artists. So it's no wonder that Don has become so active on topics like justice, equal rights, and early childhood trauma. Her work with, uh, for several drug rehabilitation centers, uh, co-founded a volunteer organization that provides homeless women with alternative healthcare support, served as a program director for the Humboldt Domestic Violence Services, the McLean Foundation, the MBGC. Uh, she's brought change and support to our community and communities at large, not to mention her current work with Wild Souls Ranch as the operation director, adding up for a total of 20 years, at least, in the nonprofit sector. And if that wasn't enough, she is currently working her tail off to become a lawyer with the goal of specializing in family practice to help those who can't afford representation. Awesome. Wow. The table. Don enjoys painting and crafting and has a deep love for growing vegetables and flowers. She has been quoted on saying she, if she had her choice, she would be a pea farmer. That's interesting. And uh, it's no wonder that one of her favorite new ga gadgets is her noise-canceling headphones. I'm sure they are excellent for tuning out the family and working on an art project or enjoying nature. But uh, Dawn has also brought her years of restaurant experience to assist her partner Sean's restaurant in Eureka that's called the Diver Bar and Grill, which if you haven't been before, makes marvelous bur burgers, wood fires, pizzas, an assortment of small batch, lovingly made dishes, Fortuna Sunrise Rotarians, give it up for Don Watkins. I'm a little speechless, Simon. Thank you for you, that. You betcha. You betcha. My noise, my noise canceling headphones are certainly the current joy of my life. So thank you for recognizing those as well. <laughs> uh, you betcha. You. Uh, uh, so that recognition and stellar illustration has to be a worth about the same as a ticket to the movie theater and medium-sized popcorn, say uh, <laughs> 20 bucks? I, that sounds good. Uh, yeah, definitely. Okay, Thank awesome. you. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so very much. And at this time, I'm going to hand it over to our program chair, Erin Dunn, who will introduce this week's program. Okay, good morning, everybody. We're uh, thrilled to have Kelly Bruce here with us this morning. In 2010, Kelly Bruce was raising her daughter alone, living in the beautiful mountains of Breckenridge, Colorado, teaching her children to ski for Vail, teaching children to ski for Vail Resorts. On New Year's Eve, she was hit by a drunk driver and suffered injuries to her lower back and neck. These injuries would ultimately end her skiing profession, sending her on a path of pharmaceutical pain management. 
After a horrible out-of-body experience one night on Ambien, she decided there had to be a better way to manage the pain and still be able to have the confidence to be an effective parent. She was not only com able to completely manage pain to the point of not even, even needing Advil, but she was able to come off other medications for medical conditions such as ADD and major depressive disorder. She was amazed how versatile the plant was in alleviating ailments. She became quite outspoken about the benefits, this is of cannabis, advocating for various ways to use it. In 2012, someone reported her medical use to Child Protective Services. Kelly openly and willingly admitted she was, she was a medical patient and using cannabis to treat her medical conditions. She believed her choice was with she believed her choice with the direction and care of her doctors were better than using prescription drugs. The state disagreed with her choice to consume a Schedule I illicit drug, even while under her legal right with the state, and Kelly was founded on her charges. She fought hard, appealing the court's ruling, and after a two-year probation, all charges were dropped. This experience is what sparked a fire inside Kelly that has grown into both Cannamami nonprofit as well as the first ever cannabis company to provide THC options designed with motherhood in mind. Kelly attended schooling at St. Michael's College, George Mason University, and Colorado State University, where she studied psychology and business. Kelly is a wife and mother of four, and she currently lives in Humboldt County, where she is involved in local and public advocacy. So welcome, Kelly. Uh, we're glad you're here and take it away. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much um, for that lovely introduction. Yes, um, so um, my name is Kelly Bruce, and I am the founder of Canamami Nonprofit. We are a 501c3 tax-exempt organization, and our mission is to provide safe access to natural medicines. We are concentrated right now on supporting the family unit, particularly the mother, um, as cannabis um, becomes more legal and accessible throughout the country, we really felt that there was a need to support families in creating access, creating safe plans, and really just providing a safe place to gain knowledge. Um, mothers who are curious about using cannabis as an alternative to pharmaceuticals during pregnancy, labor, and postpartum face ridiculous challenges to access just to information in general. The majority of the medical staff, particularly in OBGYN, are not familiar with the endocannabinoid system. They're not familiar with the current information and research out there in regards to cannabis and how it can be used in various forms to be effective. And so we created a nonprofit and part of what we do is we run a virtual online clinic that is accessible to anybody. Uh, anybody can call in. We have board certified nurses and you can have a free 20 minute consultation with them to discuss anything. They are trained and specialized in the OBGYN, the laboring and the pregnancy aspect of of care, but they're also very knowledgeable in regards to various um, ways you can use cannabis to help with cancer and other ailments. Uh, so it's a really great resource. I love it. Marissa is our director of wellness. She's a phenomenal mother and nurse. Um, she lives in Boston. We have nurses from all over the country that volunteer in our clinic. We have supported families in four different continents, so that's pretty cool. Um, we are growing and looking for strategic partners to help donate, to fund our clinic. Right now, it's completely self-funded through the sale of our CBD products, so we make three CBD bath bombs and bath salts that we really promote to uh, um, laboring mothers uh, to use to help uh, re you know, alleviate pain, back pain, feet pain, hand pain. Um, there's a lot of pain <laughs> associated with growing humans. 
Um, but the outcome, great pain comes great joy, right? So that's, um, you know, in a nutshell of who we are, our work is to me very important because I believe that the mother is one of the most vulnerable consumers out there because of the legal landscape. And so we really uh, advocate hard for uh, the family unit's ability to be empowered information and we want them to feel safe to be able to make the choices that they need to make um, do you guys have any questions for me this is also really cool I've never been to a rotary so I'm, I'm thank you for having me here I feel like did I get paused oh no I have, a, I have a question Kelly this is John Sapper yes um, hi. our um, your clinic you said you have um, nursing consultation and that uh, throughout the country. So uh, is this exclusively virtual? And, yes. Uh, okay. Yes. The clinic, uh, we went with a virtual model for multitude reasons. One, we felt that we could have the largest reach. Two, we felt that the demographic that we are targeting with our services have a unique situation um you know going into public and just being around cannabis walking into dispensaries walking into anything about it that automatically puts them at a stigmatized situation and so privacy was really important and accessibility was really important and so we felt that the virtual model was great and it allows um the client or the person who's coming to the clinic to have three ways of communicating. They can do, um, we use a go-to meeting, um, but it has a form very similar to this where you can do a face-to-face -face interaction. There is um, a texting interaction that you can use, and then you can just do voice over um, the IP. So, you know, it's we can meet them wherever they're comfortable at. And then it also helps sometimes with the language. The typing is a little easier um, than verbally speaking. Um, yeah, we felt the virtual model uh, was best. We have talked about potentially doing brick and mortar at some point. Um, that would be a wonderful goal, but I don't think that we are quite there yet, especially with the current landscape of everything. Yeah, so are most of your clients also local or you have clients throughout the country as well? We actually have clients throughout the world. We service all over. We have um, serviced uh, families from Germany. We have serviced families over in Europe, um, England, um, Britain. Um, we um, have serviced a lot of families here locally, um, but really we get, um, it's a great mix of, of people from all over the country, uh, really curious about, you know, is it safe? How do I find it? What products do I use? And just so you know, the clinic is non-diagnostic, so we are not writing prescriptions. Uh, we are not um, giving dosage information. It's really a place to just start with getting good, solid information and directions because, um, you know, there was a study that came out in Colorado, I believe, 2017 or 2018. They were one of the first states that legalized cannabis for recreation. And they found that women who were going into the dispensary and getting medical advice from the bud tenders. And we just really felt that that was a huge call to action. Um, the patients or the families are scared to talk to their doctors for a variety of reasons. One, they don't want to get like checked in their little medical record that they're consuming or that they you know they don't want to have any legal complications so they're afraid they talk to the medical so they're turning to the the bud tenders who are not appropriate people to be answering any kind of medical questions in my opinion so we felt that we needed to come come forward with someone from the medical community and so nurses were the ones that were the most accessible to us and that made the most sense um, we've talked about adding midwives 
and doctors into the clinic, but the need for that level of information and, and, and stuff just isn't there yet. Um, so the nurses is just a, a great place for it to be. Hold on, I see there's a little question here. Um, okay, sorry. <laughs> I just, I, I'm new to Zoom, guys, so I, I don't know all the little things that are going on. Um, what other questions can I answer for you guys? Well, I got another question if other folks are quiet. Uh, how do you make money? Do people pay for this consultation service? Is it a, a other types of fundraising? How do you, how do you pay the bills? my back can you guys hear me i think my internet might have dropped a little bit oh yeah i I'm back now <laughs> yeah this is john again i was asking the question how do you pay the bills uh do uh, folks that your clients do they pay a fee for this consultation or is it a, other kinds of fundraising or yes that's a great question so right now we're kind of like hand to foot so we are not able to service all of the people that come into the clinic um at at the rate that they're coming in our nurses are paid they're paid at a reduced rate they're awesome um and so we pay the nurses through the sale of our products. So we create CBD products uh, for moms and really anybody. Um, and so when we sell the products, the profit from the sales of that goes directly into supporting the clinic. We also do other various fundraising events. Um, during COVID, it's been a little bit challenging because we can't go anywhere <laughs> to like events. Um, so we've tried to like pivot and come up with some ways, but the sale of our products is the biggest way that we fund the clinic. We also work with Amazon Smile. We participate in their program. So if anybody is interested um, in supporting the clinic, it's a free way. You just you go to Smile Amazon and you can pick a charity. Um, I would encourage you to pick Canamami, but if you're not using a Smile and you do use Amazon, I'm gonna plug that real quick. It's a free way to support any charity that you want. Um, doesn't cost you anything and Amazon will donate half a percent of everything that you purchase through them to the charity of your choice. So that's a cool thing to do. We also are looking, um, so the clinic, the nonprofit is, um, the education component to our cultivation company. So I also own five cultivation permits here in Humboldt County. We have an acre of outdoor sun-grown canopy and we will be releasing our THC products to the market this fall and a dollar from every product sold on the THC line will be donated to the clinic as well. And so we're really anticipating that to be a huge um, revenue generating opportunity for the clinic um, but you guys can also donate at any time and we're looking for local partners um, I am now starting to reach back into our local community I've done a lot of work outside of Humboldt County and now I'm coming back in here to really talk to the business owners and the community let them know that this resource is here let them know that we are open and looking for partnerships um, and just, you know, putting ourselves more and more out there. It is challenging and tricky just because of um, the sensitivity of the demographic that we are supporting. So there are challenges there, but we meet them head on with um, education and information. Awesome. Thank you so much, Kelly. Anybody else have any questions for Kelly Bruce this morning? Okay, hearing none, I'll move on to our weekly drawing. Thank you so much, Kelly, for joining Thank you. us this morning. Yeah. It was really nice to be here. This is very cool. Thank you. Yeah, there's applause happening right now. You just can't hear it because they're all muted. <laughs> uh, all right, Dr weekly drawing. I'm going to draw a ticket with a club member's name on it, and then they could win untold fortunes. $90. $90. Wowzer. Taking out the penny for Joe. What? 
What's it gonna be, Penny? Is that a drum roll? It's gotta be a drum roll. Somebody's getting excited. What's it gonna be? How about this ball? Whoa, oh, no. Uh, pay $5. Uh, you don't win the pot this morning, sorry, Penny, but uh, $5, thank you so very much. Does anybody else have anything for the world, Rotary on the international level, nationally, or our club in particular to bring to the table this morning? Hey, Simon. Yes. I got a story for you. Mission story? Quick little story. Okay. The, um, I, kind of interesting here, yesterday got a call from uh, Cheryl's daughter, uh, who's finishing her doctoral work in doctoral work. Cleveland, and uh, she had an interesting incident yesterday. Uh, she was leaving her place of work at the Cleveland Medical Clinic, and her husband, Kellen, picked her up, and they started driving away and came to a stop sign, and a car hit them from behind. And so Kellen, um, who was previously in law enforcement and that, he started to get out to, um, you know, exchange names and insurances and that. And uh, as he started to get out, the car took off. Well, uh, Jen said, well, I'm going to call 911. Let's follow and try to get the license number and and uh, so we could catch these folks. So they go a couple miles and the car in front of them stops and uh, Kellen pulls up a little bit of a distance away from them and notice there's no license plate on the car. At which times he, at which time he notices the the uh, passenger uh, rolls down his window, turns around, and fires several rounds into their vehicle. Oh my God! And uh, so Kellen uh, reaches over and shoves Jen down on the floorboard and says, "Stay down there." And he, being in previous in law enforcement and security, he has a concealed carry. He takes out his weapon. Oh, Jesus. And um, uh, starts unloading through his windshield into the other vehicle. At which time those folks probably didn't expect somebody was going to return fire on them. So they took off. <laughs> so needless to say, uh, they didn't uh, pursue. And all of this was while 911 was on the line with Jen. And so they obviously took a report and uh, uh, description of the vehicle, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, still looking for them, but uh, what a way to what a way to start a day! And just thankfully, uh, no one, uh, Jen or Kellen, was was hit or injured. They did have to get their car towed because it all started smoking. But uh, what a what a welcome to uh, to the day. So just thankful that uh, no one was was hurt. And I asked, I uh, texted Jen and I asked her, I says, well, how you doing? She says, physically, we're doing fine. I'm doing fine. She says, and mentally, I'm uh, processing things a little bit here. And she said, I, I, I don't think I'll, uh, I don't think I'll be so enthusiastic about chasing vehicles anymore. So that's a, Bit of a story of thanks that no one was hurt in that incident. That's that's a wild story, John, and and real too. Oh, holy moly, goodness! I'm so glad nobody was hurt. Um, wow, <laughs> <laughs> straight out of an action movie or something. Um, at that note, Kurt's cats doing a drive-by. I see in the uh, in in Kurt's scream. <laughs> And uh, wrong term. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> what was it the right term? Uh, anybody else have any uh, thing that they'd like to share? That was 
That was pretty, I don't know if we can top that. Yeah, how do you follow that, man? You, you <laughs> don't. I think, I think we call this meeting to close. All right. Thank you so much for joining us this week and every week. Uh, we're going to have another fun one next week. And let's keep doing good. If anybody thinks of anything that, that we can do to support our community and, and just get, get, be present as Rotarians, please let me know. Please let the club know. Uh, we want to continue our mission. All right. Thank you so much. Have a marvelous day, everybody. Meeting Thanks, Good meeting.